Hi everyone, welcome back once again. So let's just finish off the wind load calculation as per the British standard. Now this is the part four and should well conclude all the past three parts. And the next time I upload a video, the next video I will be uploading on YouTube is going to be the same example, the same wind calculation, but I'm not going to do it manually. We are going to use a software called Techletits and you see that the program is very powerful and helpful so uh, I'll be doing the same example but in a software so uh, till then let's just finish this off and let's get started so this is our example and we pause the video here with the um, with a number of cases so um, as I said for the zero degree external coefficients, we're gonna need to well divide the zero degree wind direction into two cases. That is because the internal pressure is going to be well, we have two options, or rather, we have two scenarios. We have it as positive 0 0.2 and negative 0 0.3. Right, this is the zero degree external coefficients, and this is the zero wind direction. We have all the vertical. Uh, external coefficients for the vertical walls and for the roof as well. Uh, we did all of these calculations in the part three of this series. So let me just uh, simplify the well plan of my building. I'm going to just put it in this kind of schematic diagram just to ease the well the problem and make it easier to be understood. Now we have the plan of the building. This is the wind direction, zero degree. We have all the vertical uh, external coefficients. And if I take a cross section here, AA, then uh, I'm gonna see it in this way. And there is one thing important. This is the case one. Remember for the case one, we have the internal coefficient to be as plus 0.2. Right, there's one thing that you have to pay attention for. Now for the roof, as you might notice that we have so many areas here that is that is because we are including the local areas remember for the local areas the coefficient is going or the pressure sorry the pressure is going to be kind of um, bigger when compared to the center of the roof now the overall design I don't want to base my overall design okay uh, especially if we are talking about steel structures that is very costly I don't want to base my overall design based on the um, local local areas because they have relatively high pressure compared to the center of the roof. So, well, I'm going to base my design or my um, calculation of the external coefficient for the roof based on the largest areas, that is G and C. But when it comes to the design of the local areas, like A or B, um, then I need to consider the coefficient for these local areas. But as an overall design, it's totally fine if you go for the G and C. Right, so this is the case one. And the case two, exactly the same thing. We have it still, the, well, the, the, the wind direction as zero degree. And what will be changing is the internal coefficient it's it's just going to be z a minus 0 0.3 that makes it that's it for the zero degree external and internal coefficients for the for the case two now for the case three and four all of these are regarded for the 90 degree wind direction so this is the 90 degree wind direction we have all the uh, vertical walls external coefficients and we have it as well for the roof right again we have the case 3 the case 3 simply because we are dealing with the enclosed building now the case 3 is going to be where we have the internal pressure as positive 0 0.2 and again for the roof we take just c as an overall design right so this is the case 3 and the case 4 exactly the same thing except that the internal coefficient is now negative 0 0.3 Right, so that makes a total of four cases. These two are regarded 
as for the zero degree wind direction and the last two again are for the 90 degree wind direction okay in this part we will be focusing on the size effect factor ca because if you get back to this equation our aim or our goal of this entire calculation is to determine the net surface pressure which again uh, requires us to figure out the external pressure and the internal pressure the pe and the pi now i've got everything that i need in these equations qs well we have the dynamic pressure ca so the cpe and the cpi that was in part three and this part will be focusing on the size effect factor and will carry on the well the net surface pressure on our building right now i'm referring to this clause and in order to find the size effect factor the ca we have to determine a parameter called the diagonal dimension now the a must be um, determined for both internal and external parts of the building and the size effect factor is going to be of course for both the interior and the exterior now we've got this our building here and in order to find the diagonal dimension the a in which i'll be able if if i if determined i'll be able to determine the size effect factor ca now i have to re refer to figure 5 of the code and in figure 5 it tells you basically how to calculate the diagonal dimension so this is our building and let's get started with the gable faces right it is just Pythagoras theorem a we want to calculate the dimension this dimension the diagonal dimension here and simply Pythagoras theorem uh, that is uh, 30 square plus 10 square all under square root gives it this value this is for the gable face okay this is for the gable face and we do it for the vertical sorry for the side side walls or the longitudinal walls again the same concept and we determine the diagonal <coughs> dimension for the roof as well now the roof is a bit tricky okay this is the roof again um we have all the dimensions here and remember the height to the eaves up to here is just 10 meters and then we have the top height which is uh, increased by two meters okay and first of all i'm applying the pythagoras theorem in order to determine this uh, length okay and then as you might have seen in the figure five this is the diagonal dimension of the roof uh, this is the a simply a will be the 45 square plus 15.1 square all under square root so I do have everything that I need in order to determine the size effect factor for the exterior right now will I be able to determine this yes but I need to get back to figure four of the code we have this graph in this graph I've got the diagonal dimension which I have already determined for all the parts of the building and you'll see in the y-axis we have a size effect factor the ca that is i'm aiming for but the thing is i've got everything i need except which line you see here that i need to refer to in order to find the size effect factor we have a we have b and we have c actually in figure four we have um we have that graph that i have already shown you and we have this table this tells you basically the key two lines on figure four and well i need to get back to my example we determined we determined the effect uh, the effective height and we said the effective height whether you take it from zero degree one direction or 90 degree one direction is going to be just constant 12 meters site was assumed to be in country and close distance to sea 12 kilometers but that all into consideration we will see that the line b right because we have the effective height it's somewhere in between and site and country again closest distance to c somewhere in between so 
line B and let's just determine the size effect factor for the gable face again A we have it at 31.6 so this is 10, 20, 30 31.6 somewhere here go back hit the line B and get back here it's somewhere it's like mostly 0 0.86 do the same thing for the side face and then do it for the roof now I will only now be able to determine the external pressure on my building that is the PE because I've got everything that I need here except that if I determine the external pressure I will not be able to determine the net surface pressure because I don't have the internal pressure um, on my building and thus I have to determine the internal pressure for the internal pressure for enclosed buildings uh, referring to this clause it is very simple uh, 10 uh, cube uh, root of the interior volume now the interior volume of my building well I've got my building in this um, simplified um, diagram now in order to find the internal volume uh, I might divide my building into triangle and rectangle because the roof is kind of triangle and what's below the roof just a rectangle so the total volume is going to be the volume of the triangle plus the rectangle and the volume of the triangle here so it is half times the length of the base times the height and because I want to find the volume I just multiply it by its length that is the 45 plus the volume of the rectangle so it's just 30 times 10 times its length that makes a total antenna volume of 14,850 meter cube so put that into this equation and this is your diagonal dimension for the interior right let me get back to figure 4 and draw the line so 246 somewhere here hit the line B and this is your internal CA 0 0.7 almost 0 0.7 right and as summary the size is fact the size effect factor CA I've got it for the interior I've got it for the exterior only now I'll be able to determine the net surface pressure and let's get started so first of all I'm going to determine the PE and then the PI and then I can just work out the the net surface pressure right so we have four cases now the thing is I'll have to do it four times because I have four cases if I do the case one the case two and three and four will just will be this exactly the same so um, in order just to make this video not too boring or lengthy uh, I'm gonna um, do the case one okay if you want to try the case two three and four you can do it of course but um, again they just follow suit let's consider case one and let's do it for the case one okay this is the case one and for the case one again uh, the dynamic pressure we already have the dynamic pressure and we have the size effect factor for all the exterior and interior and well this is our building this is the case for the zero degree okay case one and we have to determine the pressure for all the parts so we're starting with the wind ward okay for the wind ward we have the PE PI and we need to determine the net surface pressure now the PE okay this equation uh, QS the dynamic pressure we really have it and the CPE wind ward we already have it here so positive 0 0.73 and CA for the remember this is the side phase and we have it here so that makes uh, a pressure of 1.3 kN per meter square this is the external pressure and the internal pressure well exactly the same thing QS we have the QS and CPI remember this is the case one times the CA which is a constant it's not going to change uh, actually the PI for all the parts is going to be 0.3 kN per meter square now find the difference 
that makes the net surface pressure. So 1.3 minus 0 0.3 gives you 1 kilonewton per meter square. Now for the leeward, exactly the same procedure. CPE here is going to be negative 0 0.5 and the leeward is just side face and the PI is not going to change as I said. Get the difference. Do it for the gable face, exactly the same thing except that the CPE here is going to be for the gable face and PI again it's not going to change. Get the difference, the net surface pressure. Do it for B, C and go to the roof. Now for the roof we have G okay now remember for the cpe we have the g here and for the roof the ca for the roof is going to be um, 0 0.83 and pi again the same get the difference all right for the c we have to do it twice because we have well two values here so we we'll start with a zero with a minus 0 0.55 and this is what we get for the minus or negative 0 0.55 and we compare this with the positive 0 0.05 okay uh, if you compare this one with the minus 0 0.55 you'll see this is this is more critical so we take this one into consideration instead of taking the positive 0 0.05 so that makes it so this is the zero degree uh, wind direction the case one and if I want to translate all what I have worked out, you see that for the walls, for the vertical walls, and for the roof, the pressure, the wind wall, so these parts here will be subjected to this pressure. For the lee ward, the back side of this building, this is the negative pressure. A, this is the A, some part of the gable face. We have it for B, C, and G, and C. This is the G and this is the C. Remember, this was just the case one. You have to do it for, or sorry, three times. That is for case two, case three, and case four. But again, they just follow suit. And I'm done with the case one. But let me just translate what I have um, worked out. Now, this is the building. Suppose for the case one, I want to determine the force on this column, particular column, this column. First of all, this is located here in the windward that is um, subjected to this pressure. And well, this is my column. And well, I can determine this the pressure on this column as a UDL. So we have one kilonewton per meter square. This is the pressure times the tributary area here. You find that we have a UDL of 7.5 kilonewton per meter. So this column will be subjected to this UDL or I can just multiply it by its height. So the height is, remember the height to Eve is just 10 meters and 1 kilonewton per meter squared times 7.5 times 10 gives the 75 kilonewton. That is a point load acting at the, at the mid span of the column. So that is, well, depends on your preference, whether you want to take it as a UDL or as a point load um, as you carry on the forces analysis and the design process of the building. And that makes it, that makes it, again, um, this was just a case one. Um, in real life situation, you have to do it for the, like for the, all, the, all the cases. I remember, the next video I'll be uploading well, I'll be using a sophisticated uh, program, of course. I will see how to do it next time. And, well, till then, thank you very much, and I'll see you later.